In today's lesson, we'll learn about using midpoint and the formula, also the Pythagorean theorem. So the things you're going to want to add to your um, paper or your words will be the coordinate plane, which you should know, what the leg is of a triangle, and what the hypotenuse is. Also things you should know. So first we'll talk about the coordinate plane. Don't forget, um, this is what it looks like. And a coordinate plane is a plane divided into four regions by two, pretty much two number lines. So you'll see you have the X number line that goes horizontal and the Y number line that goes vertical. So that we just took two number lines and um, put them on top of each other. So the first thing we're going to look at is how to find the midpoint. So we already learned that the midpoint is the point in the middle, but now that we put it in a coordinate plane, um, we can't just say it's the point in the middle on the X, it's also the point in the middle on the Y number line. So, to find the midpoint, we are going to say, find the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So, if we only have two numbers, finding the average means you're going to add the two endpoints x values, so you'll see x1 and x2, and divide by 2. Add the two endpoints y values and divide by 2, and it'll put you in the middle for your x, and it'll put you in the middle for your y and that will give you the midpoint of a diagonal seg uh, segment. So something to keep in mind always, it helps to draw a picture. So if we're given points, the first thing we're going to do is plot those points. So first example, find the coordinates of the midpoint of segment PQ. So we'll go to a number line. We're going to plot P at negative 8, 3. Remember, negative 8 is going to go to the left and up 3. And negative 2, 7. So now we're going to have our midpoint formula. This you don't have to memorize. Um, it is up in the room somewhere, and it should be given to you anytime you need it. So if we're going to take the average of the x's, we're going to take our first point's x, which is negative 2, or negative 8, excuse me, plus negative 2, divided by 2, and then we're going to take the average of the y's, 3 and 7, add those together, and divide them both by 2 tells us that our midpoint should be at negative 5, 5. So here's one more we can try. So if we need help with this one, I would say plot, a, plot those points. So if you want to try that before you um, look at it, you could pause. This is what we, it looks like here. We've got negative 2, 3 and 5, negative 3. So notice when those segments really long or it crosses um, crosses quadrants, it really helps to have that formula. So we're going to say take the average of our x's. I see that our x's are negative 2 and 5. So if we add those together and take the average of our y's, so we're going to say 3 plus a negative 3, which gives us 0. So uh, when we simplify, negative 2 plus 5 gives us 3 divided by 2 stays a fraction. So our midpoint, if we went to 3.5 on the x, we'd stay at y is 0. So our midpoint would be right here. Okay, we can also use the midpoint to kind of work backwards. In this example, it says x has a coordinate of 2, 7. m, the midpoint, has this coordinate of 6, 1. You could also draw a picture on this one. Um, it says find the coordinate of y. So we're looking for the other endpoint. So it says here's your first midpoint x, or endpoint x. Here's the midpoint of the segment. Now figure out where is the other endpoint going to be. So first step, we're going to let the coordinates of y be x and y. Something, the x we don't know yet, and the y we don't know yet. Notice we're going to have two variables because we're looking for two different numbers. So if we go to the midpoint formula, this time we have the actual midpoint. So if I plug the midpoint in equals, the midpoint equals the average of my x, so the x plus the other x that I don't know, 7 plus the y that I don't know, divide by 2. So now you notice we kind of have two separate problems. We're going to set up one problem to find x and one problem to find y. So if we want to set find the x coordinate, we're going to take, well, the, the midpoint was 6, and our formula gave us 2 plus x over 2. So if we look at that equation, to get the 2 from the bottom to go away, remember with the fraction, the bottom number is almost like we're dividing. We're saying 2 plus x divided by 2. So to make that go away, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. 
So this 2 will cross out with this 2. And we'll have 12 equals 2 plus x. Subtract 2 from both sides. And the x coordinate of our other endpoint is going to be 10. Um, same thing we're going to do with the y's. If I took the, in, the midpoint's y value and set it equal to what we plugged into the formula, our two endpoints, here's one of them, here's the one we need. We're going to multiply both sides by 2. We're going to subtract 7 from both sides. And we'll see that the y coordinate, or the y value of the other endpoint will be negative 5. So the coordinate of the other endpoint is going to be 10, negative 5. Here's one more example of that because it's kind of difficult. Um, so if we don't know, we know that the one endpoint is at negative 6, neg negative 1. The midpoint S, says S is the midpoint, is at negative 1, 1. And now we're going to look for the other endpoint. Sometimes I think it's helpful too to think, okay, how far did I have to move from negative 6 to negative 1? Well, I added 5. So I'm going to want to add 5 again. And that would put us at 4. From negative 1, I moved to 1, I had to move 2 spaces, so I'll move 2 spaces again to get to the other endpoint. Here's the other process for that. T, we don't know. So if we go to our midpoint formula, the midpoint that they gave us should equal the average of the two x values and the average of the two y values. We're going to look at this as two separate equations, one equation for the x's, one equation for the y's. So we'll break that apart and set them equal to each other. So we'll take the negative, or the y, the x, excuse me, we'll take the x coordinates, set the coordinates equal to each other. So the midpoint's x value was negative 1. This was the formula's x value. Multiply both sides by 2. The 2 um, out here will cross out with the 2 here. We'll simplify that. And now that that's a negative 6, we're going to add 6 to both sides. And we're going to get that the x value is 4. Remember, same thing for the y's. We're taking the midpoint's y value and setting it equal to what we got from the formula. Multiply both sides by 2. Add 1 to both sides. And the y value of the endpoint will be 3. All right, now we're going to talk about finding distance. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen the distance formula, but it's been a while. It's also very messy, um, but that's one that you don't need to memorize. You just want to know how to use it. So the distance formula helps us find... Um, the distance between two, seg two points that are diagonal in a number line, or in a coordinate plane. Because if they're not diagonal, we can just count to them. But this helps us do diagonal lines. So we're going to take the difference of our x's squared plus the difference of our y's squared. So let's give it a shot. It's all about plugging in. This says to find the length of fg and the length of jk and determine if they're congruent. So we've got to remember, what's it mean to be congruent? We want to see if they have the same length, if they're equal lengths. So the first thing we need to do is find the coordinates. So we're going to find the coordinates of all four points. So um, like, for example, for j, we went to the left 4, and we didn't move up and down, so that's at negative 4, 4. We'll do that for each one. With the distance formula, I always start by writing the formula down first, and then plugging in my numbers. So if we start with um, our points, if we want to do the length of FG first, because that was the first segment, we're going to pick one to be our first point and one to be our second. Just because F is listed first, we'll call this point one, and this will be point two. So in the formula, you see these little numbers that are showing below the variables. So we know the ones that are written up high are exponents, but when they're written below, down here, they're trying to tell you a location. So we have two x's, one's from the second point and one's from the first. So those are not um, exponents, those are just telling you which point to go to. So when we plug in, we're going to say the x of the second point, so if g was our second point, we're going to say 5 minus the x of our first point, and then we're going to look at the y's. We want the y of our second point, we call g our second point, minus the y of the first point. We're going to square those. It's very important that we put these in the right places. Um, and then the rest is just simplifying. So 5 minus 1 will give us 4. 5 minus 2 will give us 3. We'll square both of those numbers. So 4 squared is 16. 
3 squared is 9, so we're going to um, take the square root of that, which gives us 5. You can use a calculator for that, or if you're comparing, you can also leave it in the square root, and you can compare them then. Okay, so we don't want to do the same thing for jk. Notice this one's kind of messy because we got a lot of symbols or negatives. Um, so we're going to say the x of our second point minus the x of our first, the y of our second minus the y of our first. Square those um, differences. Remember, minus a negative gives us a positive. So we're saying negative 1 plus 4, which will give us 3 squared. Negative 3 minus 0 gives us negative 3. 3 squared is 9. Negative 3 squared, remember we're taking a negative times a negative, also gives us a positive 9. We add those together and we get the square root of 18. Um, so even if we don't know how to simplify our rationals, I can see that the square root of 18 is not going to give me the same as the square root of 25. So we're going to say since those measures are not equal, those segments are not congruent. Alright, now we're going to use a different method to find the length of segments. We're going to look at what the Pythagorean theorem is. Um, it's pretty much the same thing as the distance formula. Um, it's just set up differently. So to do the Pythagorean theorem, you must have a right triangle. And so with the right triangle, the two legs that form the right angle are, angle are called the legs. And the what's normally diagonal or the side that's opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. So in this next picture, you'll see that their um, legs are numbered or are given a variable. A and B are the lengths of the shorter sides of the legs. And the hypotenuse is always the longest side. In the Pythagorean theorem, we will always call that C. So the Pythagorean theorem says if I square both legs of a right triangle and add them together, their value should be equal to whatever the hypotenuse is squared. So we say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's try one of those. It says use the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance to the nearest tenth. So we'll do both ways. The first way says to do the distance formula, good reminder. I always start with writing the actual equation down before I plug anything in. So just because it's listed DE, we'll call D the first point and E the second. So when I plug these in, I'm going to say X of the second point, which is E, minus X of the first point, which is D. So you can check how we plug those in. If you want to, take uh, pause the video so you can see that or look at that a little bit to make sure you know how to plug those in. We'll simplify. Remember, um, a negative minus a number is going to get bigger negative. So we have negative 5 squared. Anytime we square a negative, it will turn out positive because a negative times a negative equals a positive. We've got the square root of 106, which is approximately, that means approximately because it's not quite, we had to round 10.3. All right, now let's look at that with the Pythagorean theorem. So we're just, since these A and B are both horizontal or vertical lines, we're just going to count their values. So if I want to say how long is, is A, if I start here and I count how many moves I make, I move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So A is 5 and B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, we can also say I move from negative 2 to 3 which gave me 5, and I moved from negative 5 to 4, which gives me 9. So if we start with the Pythagorean theorem, we said a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but with equal or with an equation, you can flip those sides, it doesn't matter. So since we're solving for c, I don't know c, so that's going to stay in the equation, um, but I'm going to plug in what we got for a and b, so we're going to square those, 5 squared, 9 squared, we're going to add those together, and since C is uh, squared, that means I need to get the squared to go away. Well, the opposite of squaring is square rooting. And so same method or different method gave us the same answer. These might seem like somewhat difficult processes, but by watching a couple examples, now you'll be ready to try these in class. Um, and you'll get better at them just by practicing. Have a good one.